Comet 3i Atlas, the third interstellar visitor ever detected, has been puzzling scientists since the moment it appeared. Every time we have looked at it, we have found something new, something that doesn't quite fit the rulebook. Like when scientists analyzed its spectrum, they found that 3i Atlas contains more nickel than iron, an unusual ratio not seen in any comet observed so far. Even the previous interstellar visitor, 2i Borisov, didn't show this pattern. And now a new observation published in the Astrophysical Journal Letters shows that 3i Atlas is behaving nothing like the comets we know. It's blasting out water into space like a fire hose while it's still nearly three times farther from the sun than Earth. At that distance, normal comets are silent blocks of ice. This one is alive and spewing. Using NASA's Neil Garrell Swift Observatory, researchers looked for the faint glow that signals water being released. Since direct water vapor is hard to detect, they tracked hydroxyl gas, which forms when sunlight breaks apart water molecules. And sure enough, they found it. Clear evidence that the object was shedding water long before it should have been warm enough to do so. Now, how much water are we talking about? Well, around 40 kilograms per second that's about what a fire hose would spray if you pointed it into space. At that rate, scientists estimate that about 8% of the comet's surface must be active, a surprisingly large fraction compared to the 3-5% typically seen in comets from our own solar system. So what's causing all that activity so early? Normally, water ice on a comet only vaporizes when it gets close enough to the sun for temperatures to rise. But 3i Atlas seems to have a different mechanism. Near-infrared observations from Gemini South and NASA's Infrared Telescope facility revealed that its coma is filled with tiny ice grains and clumps of frozen material. These chunks, once exposed to sunlight, heat up and release vapor on their own. Think of them as miniature geysers floating around the comet venting water even while the main body stays too cold to sublimate directly. This behavior might explain why the comet appears so active from such a great distance. It's not just one solid block of ice, it's a swarm of icy fragments, each one contributing to the outburst. Isn't it fascinating that every interstellar comet we've discovered has defied what scientists expected? Oumuamua showed no signs of ice at all. Borisov was loaded with carbon monoxide, and now 3i Atlas is venting water from a distance where no comet should be active. Speaking of defying expectations, the James Webb Space Telescope also caught something odd about the interstellar object's chemistry. It seems to have a high ratio of carbon dioxide to water, meaning its composition leans heavily toward carbon-rich ices. That ratio could hint that the star system it came from had a colder or more carbon-dense environment than ours. And in the middle of all that gas and dust, scientists also detected traces of cyanide compounds, the same molecule that can form the building blocks of amino acids, the foundations of life. Since its discovery, 3i Atlas has been racing through our solar system at more than 210,000 kilometers per hour, following a nearly flat hyperbolic trajectory that will soon take it back out into interstellar space. Recently, ESA's ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter and Mars Express spacecraft managed to spot it about 30 million kilometers away from Mars. In early October 2025, as interstellar object 3i Atlas swept past Mars, Two European spacecraft, the ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter and Mars Express, found themselves just 30 million kilometers from the visitor, the closest view of any ESA mission. Neither probe was designed for this kind of target, but now they were being asked to capture something faint, distant, and moving. The challenge was enormous. But when the Color and Stereo Surface Imaging System, or CASIS, aboard ExoMars Trace Gas Orbiter began taking exposures, something remarkable appeared. In the center of the frame, a faint fuzzy white dot, drifting slowly downward. That dot was 3i Atlas. 
What we're seeing isn't the comet's solid heart, but its coma, the hazy halo of gas and dust that surrounds the nucleus as it warms up near the sun. The nucleus itself, probably just a few kilometers wide, is far too small to resolve. Still, the coma, spanning several thousand kilometers, stands out clearly. It glows softly against the background of space, proof that the sun's heat is waking the comet from its long interstellar sleep. As the frozen gases vaporize, they drag clouds of dust outward, forming that luminous envelope. But the full size of the coma can't yet be measured. Its brightness drops quickly with distance from the core, fading into the background noise of the image. And while most comets develop a long tail that can stretch millions of kilometers, no tail is visible here, at least not yet. The CASS's data suggests that 3i Atlas's tail is still too faint, perhaps just beginning to form as the comet accelerates toward its perihelion at the end of the month. Nick Thomas, the principal investigator of the CASS's camera, explained the comet is between 10,000 and 100,000 times fainter than the usual Martian targets that CASS photographs. Over on Mars Express, the story was slightly different. Its onboard cameras took much shorter exposures, only half a second each, compared to the five-second limit on the ExoMars orbiter. And so far, 3i Atlas hasn't appeared in those frames. But scientists aren't done looking. They plan to combine multiple images to boost the signal, hoping the faint interstellar glow will reveal itself once the data are stacked together. Both orbiters also attempted something even more ambitious, to measure the spectrum of light from the comet. However, it's still unclear whether the object was bright enough for those instruments to pick up meaningful spectra, but the analysis continues. Over the coming weeks, scientists will keep reprocessing and stacking the data, searching for any clues about what 3i Atlas is truly made of and how it behaves as it warms under the sun's radiation. With so much amazing space content out there, how do we remember it all? That's where today's sponsor comes in, Recall, an AI-powered knowledge engine that helps you keep track of all the latest news, research, and discoveries you've been following. Recall automatically organizes everything you've read, watched, or written into a smart knowledge base. With the browser extension, you can save content in one click and even get instant summaries of videos, articles, or websites. You can also import your old bookmarks or notes from other apps, and it works with YouTube videos and shorts, Spotify and Apple Podcasts, PDFs, Google Docs and Slides, blogs, articles, and even TikTok. Now, Recall has launched something especially powerful, chat with your knowledge base. Instead of digging through endless notes and files, you can just ask and get instant answers across the trusted sources you've curated. And with the mobile app, sharing and saving on the go is just as easy. Subscribe to Recall today to be among the first to experience their latest release of chat with knowledge base feature. And use our code TERRITORY25 to get 25% off until November 1st, 2025. Ironically, many NASA websites and feeds have gone silent, affected by a government shutdown at precisely the moment we need real-time updates. Shutting down key public access during an interstellar flyby feels awfully convenient, especially when researchers around the world are eagerly pressing to follow what might be the most unusual object ever seen in our solar system. There's already intense speculation. Some suggest it might be a highly active comet unlike anything we've seen. Others propose more exotic ideas, a probe from beyond the stars, a piece of technology, or an alien craft. Whether those theories are plausible or not, the timing of this blackout raises eyebrows. Fortunately, we may have a lead. On October 2nd, the Perseverance rover imaged a streak across a multi-minute exposure sequence. That streak does not match the normal motion of Mars's sky background. Instead of being vertical or aligned with the star trails caused by Mars's rotation, this path is slanted and consistent across images. It's real. It's not a glitch. It's moving fast. It's plausible to consider that what we saw was 3i Atlas itself. Credit for noting this streak goes to Drew, whose post on Twitter spurred further review. Now, the object's size remains a mystery, but lower limit proposals cluster around 5 kilometers wide, 
possibly more. It lacks the huge classic dust tail of a comet. Instead, it seems to be cloaked by a vast, diffuse coma of ionized gas and dust. Its speed is extraordinary, roughly 60 kilometers per second, accelerating toward a peak near 68 kilometers per second as it nears perihelion at the end of October. Now around September 25th, a coronal mass ejection struck 3I Atlas. That may have ionized or energized its surroundings. But follow-up images taken on September 27th and October 2nd show no cataclysmic restructuring, no sudden tail breakoff or fragmentation, only hints of gradual expansion in its envelope. That's why the NASA coverage meant so much to everyone. The upcoming JUICE mission will intercept the object as it continues toward perihelion. However, Sun-Earth communications will delay much of that data delivery. Together, these assets could stitch a better portrait of 3i Atlas. For now, the mystery of the stripe has nothing to do with alien engineering and it's nowhere near as massive as some are claiming. But how big is 3i Atlas? Figuring out how big a comet really is can be difficult. The challenge lies in telling the nucleus apart from the hazy coma around it. As a comet draws closer to the sun, its frozen ices turn directly into gas, dragging streams of dust out into space with them, which forms their distinctive trail or coma. This can make the comet appear far larger and brighter than the solid body itself. Now a team from Harvard led by Richard Kluda, Avi Loeb, and Peter Varesh analyzed observations of 3i Atlas collected between May 15th and September 23rd from 227 different observatories worldwide via the Minor Planet Center. They compared the actual trajectory to the path we'd expect if only gravity acted. What they found was a tiny but noticeable push, less than 15 meters per day squared. But comets with active outgassing usually get a slight push from the jets of escaping gas. In 3i Atlas's case, the measured non-gravitational acceleration is surprisingly low relative to the observed outgassing. That suggests the nucleus is heavy enough to resist being pushed around much by those jets. From this, the researchers estimate the comet's core weighs over 33 billion tons with a diameter of roughly 5 kilometers, not counting the surrounding coma, appears to be about 3 to 5 orders of magnitude more massive than earlier interstellar visitors. Loeb has argued that, given what we expect about the available population and heavy element abundance in interstellar space, we should by now have seen far more interstellar objects of more modest sizes before stumbling into one so massive. Yet we haven't, and that marks 3i Atlas as a significant outlier. Loeb even entertains a speculative alternative that the object could be of technological origin, citing the unexpectedly large mass, the alignment of its trajectory, and some purported detection of nickel without iron as provocative hints. NASA scientists, however, urge caution. The prevailing view remains that it is most likely a natural object. Uh, from images, we also saw that this object is active, which means that around the nucleus there is some coma, which is an indication that this object is in fact a comet. Meanwhile, some scientists aren't asking what 3i Atlas is, but what its purpose might be. Astrophysicist Suzanne Falsner's idea is simple but striking. 3i Atlas may be a planet-making seed, but how can a wandering rock from another star system spark the birth of an entire planet? Let's take a tour. We enter a young solar system where a new star sits at the center of a great dusty ring. Here, tiny grains of rock swirl like smoke, clumping together into pebbles. With time, they snowball into boulders and then into planetesimals, the raw ingredients of planets. Given enough time, these grow massive enough to gather even more material. It sounds straightforward, but as we'll see, there's a serious problem with this picture. Disks only last a few million years before the gas is blown away. That window seems too short to explain how massive planets like Jupiter and Saturn were able to form. Now imagine a different scenario. Into this disk falls an interstellar object, a body already big enough to serve as a ready-made core. Instead of starting from dust grains, 
the disc suddenly has a solid seed that can immediately start pulling in surrounding gas and material. In this way, an alien traveler could speed up the birth of a new planet. Falsner's simulations support this idea. She found that massive stars are better at capturing interstellar objects than smaller ones. And sure enough, gas giants are more common around bigger stars. The match between theory and observation is striking. If this is true, then interstellar objects like Oumuamua, Borisov, and Atlas aren't just drifters. They may be the sparks that ignite planetary systems. Some might have seeded gas giants in faraway systems. Others may even have played a role in our own solar system's early history. It's a bold idea and still unproven, just like Loeb's. Interstellar objects are notoriously difficult to study. They appear suddenly, move quickly, and vanish into the dark. But this time we're ahead of the curve, as we have detected it well in advance, and our technology may finally let us uncover its true nature, rather than just guessing after it's gone. From telescopes back on Earth, the coming months are set to provide a rare opportunity to track an interstellar object in detail. Astronomers have pinned several key milestones to their calendars, landmarks to watch as this visitor races through our cosmic neighborhood. October 29th, 2025, Perihelion. Two weeks later, 3i Atlas will sling behind the sun, skimming to 1.36 astronomical units, which is about 130 million miles from the photosphere. Here, its speed peaks near 152,000 miles per hour. At this point, the comet is lost to Earth-based telescopes, hidden by solar glare, but spacecraft on Mars and at L1 will keep a watch as jets of vapor erupt from the freshly warmed crust. December 19, 2025, Earth Distance Check, with its tail now fully unfurled, 3i Atlas will pass Earth at a comfortable 170 million miles, too far for a naked eye view, but close enough for the James Webb Telescope and Rubin Observatory to rake its coma for isotopic clues. March 16, 2026, Jupiter Pass. Finally, the visitor will fly past Jupiter, 33 million miles above the gas giant's clouds. If NASA approves a late course tweak, the Juno spacecraft could swing out to sample the comet's dust stream, providing our sole up close look at material that formed beyond the sun. After that, 3i Atlas will curve back into interstellar space, leaving behind terabytes of data and a lot of questions. What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments, I'd love to hear them. If you enjoyed this video, consider becoming a channel member to support our work. And don't forget to subscribe to Territory, because this is your space.